Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Broadway Jets YouTube channel. You'll know me from Twitter as NYJ Mike. I'm joined as always by the master of receipts, NYJ Matt. And Matt, today we're going to do a tier list, a tier list of QB1 options for the 2023 New York Jets. Yeah, shout out to whoever made this on tiermaker.com. A ton of different options here. Uh, some retired 50 years ago. Some are still in the league today. So we're going to go through Five them. Kirk Cousins, yeah. We're, we'll do one. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's also is that three Taylor Heineke. So we'll, yeah. we'll, go, we'll go through the categories. Right now we have an elite quarterback option. We have good option that we can live with. Yeah. Potential is there, but is it the move? Meh, run it back. No, please. And then kicking off. The Brady Quinn is a scumbag category. I'm putting Brady Quinn there. Yeah. I'm just going to do it. And the reason he's a scumbag, one, never had beef with Jets Twitter, and then he's looking at their schedule going into 2022, and he said verbatim, they're going to go 0-9. Yeah. And then they didn't. They were great, obviously, in the early half of the year. And then when he got called out for it, he acted like a whiny bitch. He was like, that's not what I said. I said they could be 0-9. He backtracked, and he's a loser. Can't Take the hell. That. Take the hell. You, you were off by six games. The Jets were 6-3. and three. Go fuck yourself. And Brady Quinn was on the Jets in the preseason one year, so he could have been in the running back category, but I think Brady Quinn is a scumbag is the right uh, fit for Brady Quinn. I think he belongs there. Now, Brady is an interesting one because Brady now retired. I don't know where to put him. I guess... It would be in the good option we can live, or maybe we should make another category that he can also go fuck himself. Yeah, we'll do. The, we'll put him in the Brady Quinn as a scumbag category since he retired. Yeah, that's fair. It, he would have been in the good option category. Ugh, disgusting. Would have been nauseating. There's got to be another way to win a championship than with this dick bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would have been weird. I would have sold my soul to to win a ring, though. Um, a lot of fans when I put, he was like, I think I ranked him like my fourth option out of everyone available, maybe yeah. fifth. People were pissed. I mean, he probably um, realistically would be the third guy, the third best option. I'd rather have Aaron Rodgers for next year or Lamar Jackson. That'd yeah. Be the only two. I hear you. So now we get more realistic. So Daniel Jones, obviously, you assume he's going to go back to the Giants. There is a weird scenario where he doesn't. Mike, where do you put Daniel Jones here? I guess he's got to be in the good option category. You know, 15 touchdowns, five picks, efficient with no receivers. It's just funny if you said before the year the Jets might have Daniel Jones as their 2023 quarterbacks, I would, I would vomit. And I think most Giants fans didn't want him either. But, um, yeah. you know, based on what he did last year, he's he's got to be in that category. Yeah, and we can rank them too within the category, which is always fun. So right now he's a good option. Um, yeah. Now moving on to Stafford, Matty coming Stafford off an Texas. injury. I would take him in a heartbeat. Super Bowl winner, one of the best statistical quarterbacks in the in NFL history, um, you know, arm is maybe injured a little bit, but fuck him. I would take him in a second. Now, are you thinking elite or good? Because knowing what is going to go in the elite, I don't know if he belongs in that. No, tier. I think he's in the good we can live with category, but yeah. but he's a good option. He's a good option. Agreed. Yeah. What do we got? CW? So now we got um, Zach Wilson. He's got to go in the no please category. I'm going no and, and running run it back is going to have a lot of Jets quarterbacks. I'm putting Zach Wilson in the no please. I'm just doing it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Talk Can't me out it. of it. Like I just don't want him to be the quarterback. And again, we're not setting it on fire and throwing him into the garbage. I think he's going to be on the roster. He can sit behind anyone in the good options or above category, learn to be a normal quarterback, and then maybe we'll see what 2024 holds. Yeah, dude, look, this is a QB1 tier list. No, please. If this was a could be on the Jets roster, fine. Yeah. It's fine. I agree. Completely agree. We're going no, please for now. Dude, um, Sam. I Sam would fucking, Darnold. I would literally, I would, I swear to God, I would take Sam as the quarterback next year in a heartbeat. But that's just because I'm so biased. It's my guy. <laughs> this is. I, I, I think he fits pretty well into the question mark run it back category. Yes, like, yes, do yes. we run it back? Uh, you can't put him over any of these guys that we're going to have later down the road, but maybe run it back. Like, if the run it back category is where all the good options fail, and even you could argue you want the run it back category over like a meh, okay category because yes. it's, it's nostalgic and it'll be kind of funny. Dude, if Sam realized his potential, oh, yeah. 
He looked pretty good. He I, I watched a bunch of his games last year when he started down the stretch. He looks he looked solid. He played like shit the last game that they won. I think he threw for like 47 yards in the Panthers finale, but other than that, he was good. And what run it back with Mike White? I, I think Mike White might be ahead. I think he might be in the man category. Like he, I don't think he. I think he should be like third or fourth tier. What about pot- yeah, potential? Is there? I think that's it's fair. Move. I think it's. I think that's a good spot to put him. We know the categories like for him. I think the weird thing is people that hate Mike Lafleur give Mike White some similar hate. But when he, they were together, he if you hate Mike LaFleur that much, you have to credit Mike White for what he did when you could play in that offense. So I think ways, exactly. I think he I think he should be in the potential category. I would want him over several guys we're gonna get to. But for now, we can always move around. So if you're listening now, and if you are, don't forget to hit subscribe and like. Yeah. yeah. Um ninety percent of our viewers are not subscribed, and one hundred percent of our viewers are Male is between the ages of 25 and 45, <laughs> which is an unbelievable stat. But I, I think we're good here. And now we go to Baker Mayfield. Baker's the definition of meh. Definition of meh. I did a pretty good job with these categories so far. It's like everyone's good. finding a home. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the Baker stuff, again, we talked about it on our last video. The dude had gone 11 and 5 before. He has been a starting quarterback in the playoffs. Former number one overall pick. Uh, it's like, is it the. It's just not what you want. It's meh. It really is. It's just like, you know, what are you going to do? Throw for 3,400 yards, 17 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions? It's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's meh. Yeah. And then now we go on to Jacoby Brissett, who I, I do feel bad for because he's getting a ton of ricochet shots for not his fault. Like Zach Rosenblatt had an article today going over the QB options and had Jacoby Brissett as like the cover photo. Yeah. I guess his editor did it. And then people were so mad. Uh, but I, I think he's in the no please category. I don't think he's a scumbag like Brady Quinn. I would put him in. I'm just, I'm not having it. I don't even think he's in the man category. I would have him in no please. I agree with you because if he's the quarterback, it's a, it's an absolute disaster because he doesn't fit any of these. He doesn't have any potential. Get the fuck out of here, Luna. Oh, good girl. <laughs> I just started cursing at my roommate's dog. But he is so below man that if he's the quarterback you're screwed because what is again his best season he throw for he's played 16 games he throw for just over 3,000 yards and just under 3,000 yards it's just not enough you have to be able to move the ball down the field you have to get it to these receivers like what is Garrett Wilson going to really evolve with Jacoby Brissett is a disaster I won't have it I think it's fair I think it's fair and then Drew Locke is an interesting because I think he can bounce between two categories as well what the potential one? I don't want him. No, I, want I think him he's no I please. think he's meh or no please. Could he be Brady Quinn as a scumbag? I do like the video of him rapping on the sideline. So <laughs> I, that makes me go to the no please category. I think you could argue meh because he is a guy that what if he's still young enough where he can maybe do something cool, but he just like he he's very much it feels like a failure if that is your QB one week oh, one yeah. of twenty twenty three. So Fine with no please. Now here's your boy. You're excited about Ryan Tannehill. I'm, I think he's going to fit in two categories, but th- where do you have should, him? I think he should go right behind Daniel Jones or even in front of him. But yeah, based off last year, I would put him in the good option category. Look, underrated guy, like really played well with the, the Titans the last few years. Winner, high completion percentage, has thrown, you know, people think of him more as like a game manager the last few years. He's thrown for mid four thousands yards, as many as twenty seven, oh, as many as thirty three touchdowns. He did that with the Titans. Um, I, I think he's a, a good, solid player who would be a decent fit with this Jets team. If the Jets had Tannehill last year, you're in the playoffs for sure. I think it's fair. I think people might push back because they're just so invested in the potential for Rodgers and Carr. I get it. it. It very much feels like a Jimmy Garoppolo situation, which we'll get to that. Both those guys, you're happier than you were to end the year last year, but you're not as happy as you could have been. Yeah, I, I just don't know what Tannehill needs to do. The last four years combined, he's 36 and 19. He's thrown 50 more touchdowns and interceptions, and he's completing 67% of his passes with a passer rating over 100. If he's our quarterback next year, I'm not going to throw a fit. No shot. That's fair. That's fair. Joe Flacco, run it back. Run it back. He's Why elite. not? It's just funny to run it back. That whole category, 
like I'm not saying the running back category is better than the no please category, but we're we're doing it. We should probably put Teddy Bridgewater in the running back category. I was thinking it. I think he would may run it back, but hey, I'll run it back with Teddy. Yeah. I'll run it back with Teddy. Another one of those guys, you know, he's, he's made a playoffs as a starter. He he and he should have won a game. Stupid Blair Walsh missed a twenty seven yard field goal. That's a disaster. Uh, that's that is that is not talked about enough. dude that is one of my biggest fears it's like one of these years the jets are going to get in and like something horrific could happen like what uh, like the the falcon super bowl what if that happened no that that's that is different because if that were to happen i think i would physically die on yeah. the spot like just like my entire soul leaves my body the more realistic thing is like the ram saints the the dpi call like Ugh. that is the scenario where holy shit like if that happens, you just you can't control it. You can That's control not, not blowing a twenty eight three lead. You could control that. Yeah, no, it, it, the Saints play is not talked about enough. That is so disturbing, and it's so clearly changed everything. And then even if you're the Rams, it must make that season feel very strange because that game is not a satisfying ending. And then you just score three points in the Super Bowl and lose to the Patriots. If it's honesty hour right now, when that play happened live, I said bang bang play. It's a good play. And they show the <laughs> replay. He's like an hour early. One of the worst, and I, you know, I hate pass interference, but I mean that is pass interference. You have to call when it is pass interference. That's insane. One of the worst calls in the history of sports. So is Gardner Minshew a meh category? I don't know. Is he in the potential? Is there? I think he's in the third category. You think? I would. I mean, look, he's another guy who has played well when he's played, and he's the kind of dude. If you told me he, because he threw for a bajillion yards in college. Uh, he's put up good stats. Like if he started and played a season, could he throw for four thousand yards? Maybe. I don't know. Is it the move? Probably not, but that's that category. Agreed. Agree. Yeah. I like the I like the conversation here. Jimmy Garoppolo, I think, is in the front of yeah. the good option with Matt Stafford. I agree. I'd rather have Matt Stafford than him, to be completely honest. But I don't know. What are your thoughts? I, I think if you're obviously both of them are injury prone, Matt Stafford less so. Uh, just really what happened last year. Yeah, but it's scary as that elbow. It's like... Both have shown that they can win. And Jimmy Garoppolo has shown that he can provide more playoff success in a vacuum, right? Stafford had the one really fantastic year, um, which is just, you got to give him all the credit for. It's a toss up for me. I think I would go Stafford with the potential of he just going to throw for 4,800 yards. Who knows? Jimmy G could have a setback year and it wouldn't shock me if he threw for like 3,300, but Stafford gives you the highest upside. So I'd go, I'd go Stafford. Me too. And also Stafford in the playoffs was great. He threw, Nine touchdowns, seventy percent, three hundred yards a game. Jimmy G never did anything like that. I mean, even when they were winning, you know, he's the the forty nine ers ran for whatever two hundred fifty yards. Um, so I'll take Stafford, but I would be happy with Jimmy G for sure. Of course, Lamar's going to go in the elite. I, I, I there's a weird sentiment right now on Jets Twitter that, or even just all NFL Twitter that Lamar Jackson is like, like an average quarterback. Like he's a top ten quarterback in the NFL. The MVP is not only like that is a huge icing on the cake. The guy just wins and plays good football. Like he, yeah, injury prone in the past couple of years, but I would take Lamar Jackson clearly in the elite category. It's not even close. I don't think people remember. He's so scary to play against. It looks like they're going to score a billion points every time he's out there. You wonder what kind of offense w- would be ran somewhere else. Or now the Ravens might run a different offense. They fired their offensive coordinator, but. I mean, this guy is so electric. One, of, Probably the most electric player ever. And he's just a much better version of Michael Vick. Michael Vick was not statistically a very good passer until later on when he was with the Eagles. Lamar Jackson is. Doesn't look so pretty sometimes. But, you know, what a maniac and a, and a very oh, just, I mean, you know, I think he's like a top five kind of guy in the league. And obviously, if you get him, the Jets are immediately Super Bowl contenders. Agreed. Agreed. You got to have an elite. And Gino is a fun one because he's way too good to be in the run it back category. I would like where are we like he's not going to be a jet. He will not be a jet for so many reasons, but he technically is a good option. He really is based he's on his He's a performance. great option. What a crazy year. And I never believed in Gino when he was with the Jets. I always thought he was a piece of shit. I liked, you know, he's a good guy. He says nice things about the Jets all the time. But, and I also was upset. I wanted the Jet to start Mark Sanchez. Um, but, you know, then he got hurt and Gino, the Jets drafted Gino. So, I mean, he's, t- he's definitely a terrific option. What an unbelievable season he had last year. Either he's the front, of course, of the running back category, but he really is a good option. Yeah. 
Agreed. I feel like the good option is getting too filled up, but that's okay. We'll we'll figure There's, it out. No, the Jets are in a good spot. There's a lot of good options. I would be happy, legitimately happy, if any of those five guys were the Jets quarterback next year. Make it a six. I'm putting Joe Namath in the good option category. No, I'm kidding. Not we'll, do, we'll, well, I mean, I'm taking it like 2023. The guy's like 80. Like, I'm just trying to. I would actually take Namath as the quarterback. And, but you think they could throw some short passes. There's definitely, it's a more offensive league now than when he played. I'm not trying to be a dick. If you copy and paste the current Joe Namath onto the field, and he couldn't get injured. Like, he couldn't get hit and injured. He would just reset his health every single play. I think he completes more passes inside of five yards than Zach Wilson. <laughs> I think he's complete, it's going to be better than Zach Wilson at the year age of, what, 81? I wonder, can he throw? I'm sure he could still throw the ball. I think he's, he's had, like, like, nine surgeries. I have a book of Joe Namath. He's had so many surgeries on his arm. Obviously, the knees, but... It's like riding a bike. You just you hop back on. But he's got to be the running back category. Running back. Like a leader, No. Run it back. I think I'd rather have Sam before him. Rodgers is, is so elite, man. So elite. Come on. Got to be. Got to be. Think, and look, we talk about it all the time. It's the move. We know it's the move. They have to get it done. It's the move. And people are like, oh, no, he's going to a dark room for four days. Who gives a fuck? Let him go there for two months and be right. on the team. I don't care. He's not out doing drugs or killing people. Whatever. He just wants to go stay in isolation. He's like the, the Henry David Thoreau. But... This is the guy. He really is the guy. It's the perfect option. Exactly what the Jets need. A two guy for two years. And again, he's the reigning back-to-back NFL MVP. For God's sake, he's the best possible option. Maybe Lamar. You can argue Lamar is fine because he's younger and you know explosive. But I'll take my chances with Aaron Rodgers. I do need to make another note that we did not make this tier list. Like we did not put the names in here. Cause I feel like people are going to freak out on Twitter and be like, how do you have Joe name as run as run it back? Like I'm looking at how it's going to unfold. <laughs> we got Kyler Murray up here. Calamari. Take me through. I mean, it's gotta be a good option, right? What's wrong with Kyler Murray? The guy also was an MVP candidate last year. You know, the, the, the whole Cardinals, uh, downfall is very strange. You know, they were what? 10 and 0, 10 and one. In 2021, Cliff Kingsbury is the hottest thing since sliced bread. Kyler Murray's a uh, MVP candidate. Now you fire King uh, Cliff. Interesting stuff. You know, coming off the ACL is tougher next year. But yeah, if the Jets had Kyler Murray, you're in a good spot, even if he wants to be an immature imbecile. I really don't want Kyler Murray. I want his town. I don't want him as a human. I just feel like he's an asshole. But yes, there's a weird thing that you brought up when the Cardinals were 10 and 1. I kept making the point that the Jets are going to be the Cardinals in 2022. Like I like their rebuild and how everything panned out. Yeah. It was in such alignment where I'm like, oh, the Jets are going to pop like Arizona did, and then everything came crashing down. the The next toughest one is that we're going to get killed in the graphic if you put Car. You're going to get killed either way where you put Car. If you put Car in the elite category, people are going to say he's not the same as those two. He should be in the good category. If you put him in the good category, they're going to say Car should not be on the same level as Ryan Tannehill. What do we do? I think he should just be the first guy in the good category. I do. I mean, you know, because it's not, he's, he's not those guys. He's not Rogers or Lamar. It's a different level. It just is. It's a whole different level. And, but Carr is an unbelievable second tier option. He just, Hey, he's terrific. He's very, he's similar to these guys. He's comparable to Stafford, you know, actually pretty comparable with the way their careers went, you know, losing a lot of games with, one team and then but Carr hasn't had that magical run maybe he'll have it with the jets yep and again everything in the good category i would say if you cut it off at like the kyler gino even further like you you go all the way down tan hill it's still it might be a bit bittersweet if you don't land the two elite guys of course it but depends how it happens it depends i need to make that clarification because people that will see the graphic will go ape shit but we now move on to Chris Trevler. Run it back. Run it back. Why not? Like run it back with the boys, and maybe we just run it back with Fitzpatrick while we're at it. Chad, dude, it fucking they look alike. Holy hell, Chad Hackenberg, run it back with all of them. <laughs> See, run it back with all of them. So we got three left now. We ran it back with all the Jack guys outside of Zach Wilson, who we don't want to run it back. Mike White and Gino, different tiers for them. We now move on to Andrew Luck, and I don't even want to rank him because, again, 
the optics of wherever we put this guy, we're gonna get killed. Absolutely I killed. I think he should go in the elite category. I'm current, current day, current day. Like I, I'm not. I'm really not <laughs> joking. I really think he should be in the elite category. I think I would be happier if the Jets get Andrew Luck than than Carr. I would. Do the generational talent. What is he? Thirty two. I'm, I'm riding. I'm riding with you. I'm riding with you. I'll do put you him disagree? in the lead. I, I do. I swear to God, I think like if the Jets can lure this psychopath out of retirement, then we can have the Captain Andrew Luck account tweet at us. I don't. It feels like a- Andrew Oops. Luck retired like eight years ago. Yeah. Literally How long was it? Was it 2020 or 2019? 2018. 2018. It, so it was, it, well, we played him in 2018. Yeah, that's the game. Uh, Claiborne had to pick six. The, the 2019 season, which is three. It feels like unbelievably long ago. So, all right, not as far removed. I just picture like cut and paste. Andrew Luck who hasn't thrown a football in three years, but. Dude, I'll ride th- with you. I'll he's, ride with you. What is he? He's 33 years old. I really would take him. He's You can't get back into football shape. Look, if we have Aaron Rodgers as an elite option, he's 39 years old, coming off a thumb injury. This guy has been sitting on the couch. You know, he's skinny. You saw him. He's on uh, some football shows talking. I would take him in one second. Yeah, I got to make a movement to get Andrew Luck out of retirement. I'm going to look at his, tw- his Instagram followers, try to do something. Yeah. I'll think about it. I'll think yeah. about it. Now we got two to go. I mean, there's a lot of good options. Like if Kirk Cousins is really available, you 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 need Kirk Cousins in the good category. We can't put him anything below it. I don't know. He might even be ahead of Derek Carr. Why not? Too. It's yeah. very close. Maybe Carr, Carr is a little bit younger, so you want to take him. But I mean, the numbers that Kirk Cousins puts up are just gaudy, you know. And and people sh- talk shit about him for whatever reason. But I don't know what the guy has to do. Also, he's since he went to the Vikings in five years, he's forty six and thirty three. He's thrown a hundred more touchdowns and interceptions, uh, multi- three Pro Bowls. You know, which is kind of a joke this year with stupid Huntley, uh, but over a hundred pass rating again. This guy is just terrific. All he does is produce forty five hundred yards, twenty nine touchdowns this year, and you know, and he was clutching these close games. So I would love to have Kirk Cousins. You can make the argument for him or Carr. It's very similar to me. Yep, yeah, and rounded out with Heineke. Where do you got him? Fuck him. I don't want him. No, please or man. No. He could. He's probably man. Well, I was thinking if you put Heineke in the no, please, you could move Baker up one category and remove the meh category. No, yeah, I think Heineke should be meh because he, okay. he's not because he's not so horrible. You know, he just is meh. He's eh. Like my dad's friend said about a girl one time, which is terrible. He said, if the light hits her just right, she's eh. I'm going to I'm going to make an <laughs> argument. I'm going to make an argument to move Teddy Bridgewater to the Matt category. I really would. I don't know why. I feel like I, like if you tell me that Taylor Heineke is a day one starter versus Teddy Bridgewater, why are they different? No, they're not. But Teddy Bridgewater is hilarious because he was on the Jets. Fair. I'm putting him in the Matt category. That's fine. I think it's it's fair to have him there. Yeah, look, I mean, you could also mm-hmm. have Jacoby Brissett because it's the same thing if you really want. But I, I rather have him in no please. Yeah, just because his age too. So I, I like what we have here. We've built a strong foundation. We'll post the video. We'll tweet out the graphic tomorrow to allow people to watch the video. Again, this is Mike and my take. We usually are on the same page. You can see one or two of these flip to different categories. But a lot of people are going to say Ryan Tannehill is in the no please category. They're going to say uh, Daniel Jones is in the elite category. You're going to get a lot of variability. No, I would ask that before wrong. you look at the comments or reply and say you're both assholes and you should die. Make your own, same categories, and let's have that debate. Yeah, look, I, I think that any of the quarterbacks in the good option category, the Jets would make the playoffs next year. I would be very confident. That That's my thought process. I think that's fair. I think the potential category is more of a coin flip leaning to eh, not really confident. Yes. The man again, category, you yeah, need yeah. the odds to fall in your favor and everything yeah. below it. And look, yeah, like the Mike White stuff, I always go back to it. I thought he was terrific when he started uh, those three games last year before he got hurt. Without Brees Hall, without AVT, in tough situations, vicious, brutal road games against teams that finished one uh, number two in their conference. Um, or what, the Vikings finished third at the end? Whatever. Yeah. But he played very well. What I saw in the Seahawks game when he played with five broken ribs does not change my opinion on him. If the Jets had Mike White next year, I think – 
and you said he plays 17 games, I think he, they could make the playoffs with him. Awesome. Well, hey, it was a good run. We have a good list here. I think Vinny Rom- Romeo is the one that created it. Looks like he did on Twitter. So, Vinny, thank you for creating it. We'll do more tier lists. We have a lot of them. We think we've done three already on YouTube a year ago with different guests that were very fun. So we'll run it back. We'll do some more fun ones, Mike. But anything we got to say before we head out? Let's get Andrew Luck, baby. Start manifest it. All right. I like it. All right, buddy. It's good talking to you. Always a pleasure.